Should I stop now? If you can stop. Where there is no path and leave a trial. A very good morning to one and all. So before starting this session, let us begin this day with the blessing of God with a prayer song. Dr. Gayatri, Head of Department of BCom Banking and Insurance, to introduce our chief guest. Good morning, one and all present here. I feel honored to introduce our resource person, Dr. Pacha Malayadri, today. Reading other people's stories can give you inspiration and hope. It will become a reminder to you that you have to achieve great things in life. I feel the same when I read the profile of a resource person. Let me share a capsule of his achievement. Sir has authored eight books and 145 research papers. He is a member of International Editorial Advisory Boards of journals published in various countries like Canada, USA, UK, Africa, Dubai, Australia, almost all the countries in the map. Sir has reviewed more than 2,000 articles. Sir is an adjudicator for doctoral thesis in commerce and management in several Indian universities. Sir has given more than 200 talks and online as a keynote speaker. Sir has carried a, two major research projects sponsored by UGC. His latest book entitled Blockchain Technology, an application for digital marketing 
was published by world popular publisher IGI Global USA. Sir is serving as the inspecting authorities appointed by Ministry of Minority Affairs, India. Sir has very various gems in his crown. I highlighted very few of it. You can get to know more about him through the welcome speech. It's my proud privilege to have such a dynamic personality with high magnitude of achievement in our midst today. I thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and gracing this occasion with your presence in your busy schedule. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank madam, you. for your uh, nice <coughs> introduction. I thank really you. feel privileged to associate with the students and faculty members of Axilium College, okay. affiliated to Thiruvallar University. Yes, uh, today, I am going to topic which is called as a trust area, which is called as a heart topic. Sir, once again, sir. Yeah. Sir, fun. Yeah. Sir, we have welcome speech also. Just I introduced you, we have welcome speech also. Oh, sorry. Okay. After that, <laughs> you can start. Yes, proceed, proceed. Just I gave a small introduction about you. Yeah, yeah. Proceed. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Small cheer for the great welcome makes a merry feast. Now, I call upon Miss Saumya of third year to deliver welcome address. Saumya, not audible. You are not audible, Saumya. Saumya, oh. unmute. No, no, no. No, Not no. audible. Hello, sir. Ah, yes, yes. Proceed. Yes, we can hear, ma. You can start. Success is not final. Failure is not started. It is the courage to continue that count. A very good, good morning to everyone. Here, heartily welcome this and warm enough to involve you all. I welcome a suspected principal, Sister Jay Shanti, and college secretary, Sister Alice Gracie, and vice principal of Shift 2, Sister Amala Valamati, and vice principal of Shift 1, Sister Shumati. And I also welcome our head of the department, Dr. Gayati Ma'am, and also a lovable professor and my dear friend. I feel cheerful to welcome you all to this live nature webinar on mergers in Indian banking groups or there. <laughs> All the participants, please mute. It's our pleasure to invite the Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Pacha Malyaji. Welcome, sir. He obtained doctorate in commerce in 1991 from Sri Ganteswara University. Mm -hmm. He rendered services in government with 33 years of experience of teaching, research, administration, training, and consultancy. He has authored eight books and 144 research papers in various national and international editors' journals. And he is on the International Editorial Advisory Board as a member in C-55 International Series journals including Scopus Index, published from Canada, USA, UK, India, and many others. Really, it is admirable, sir. He carried out two major research projects sponsored by the EDC New Delhi. His latest book entitled Blockchain Technology and Applications for Digital Marketing, published by World Popular Publisher, IGI Global USA. He has given more than 200 talks in online access to 
She is presently chairman governing body of Aurora PG College, Patna University. She received several outstanding awards for her academic achievements, and she is a state level best teacher awardee in the year 2008, honored by government of Andhra Pradesh. Its current research includes CRM, banking marketing, finance, rural development, human resource management, entrepreneur development, and strategic management. You are such an eminent person, sir, and your achievement towards academic excellence makes us inspiring one, sir. I hope you, I hope you will all focus and gain knowledge on today's session. I will at the time to give this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Now it's time to start. With a silent heart, I shall hand over the session to our chief guest, Dr. Malyatri. Please, sir. Yeah. Is it audible? Yes, sir. We can hear. Yeah. Can I yes, start sorry. now? Yes, sir. Okay. A very good morning to all the students, faculty members of Axilium College, affiliated to Trivula University, which is an autonomous and created by NAC. I feel proud to associate with you all today morning on the trust area and it is also a, a hard topic current topic on mergers in indian banking industry boon or bane that we will discuss at length whether it is a boon or whether it is a bane that uh, i will take into task uh, before you uh, before uh, starting uh, uh, the issue first i would like to say something about uh, the banking industry uh, in the history of the banking industry uh, uh, in two or three minutes because i should not touch upon more on history because if i start history you feel bored so therefore i will touch only two three minutes and then i will share the ppt presentation as you are aware before nationalization of commercial banks all the banks are scattered only in urban areas and it is not at all located in rural area and they focused only for rich people only for industries and uh, only for their friends relatives so the major finance or major loans goes to the rich people only that is before nationalization before nationalization means before 1969 so what happened the farmers are neglected the poor people are neglected the rural areas are neglected but unfortunately there is no focus there is no social responsibility that is the fate of the country before 1969 and unfortunately the banks which are uh, scattered uh, only in urban areas which are not focused in rural areas is a pain but however but however the banks were nationalized uh, in 1969 that i will explain you through powerpoint presentation and uh, after that uh, after the nationalization again there are some mergers uh, automation what we may call it as uh, computerization uh, there was uh, new economic reforms in 1991 narsimha committee recommendations on banking sector reforms like uh, many issues we have seen 
and uh, presently many measures also took place and uh, there is a lot of change in banking industry you see now it is quite interesting you know, to note that history is going to repeat what is the history nationalization uh, privatization of banking industry before 1969 now history repeats see the government of india is planning to privatize some of the nationalized banks because of many reasons several reasons that we will discuss separately so in view of that there is we don't know the development but we can see the future vision we can see the future but now the banking industry is boom is in boom bank banks are in our pockets banks are in our mobiles see uh, you need not visit the bank if you want any service you need not visit the bank at 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 with your with your hands with your fingers you can operate you can transfer the money you can debit the money you can credit the money many many convenience are taken place so thanks to liberalization lpg liberalization privatization globalization thanks to new economic reforms and thanks to mergers but of course there are some advantages there are some disadvantages that also we will discuss at length now through ppt i am going to to present please wait for 2 minutes now i will request you uh is it visible please yes sir it's visible the second slide I, the second slide is also title. visible yes sir title of the topic yes slide. good good yes. okay now i welcome all the participants for one day national webinar organized by the department of commerce computers axilium college which is an autonomous and also nac accredited uh, at the outset i am thankful to the management i am thankful to the principal and i am especially thankful to dr gayatri who coordinated this program today's uh, topic is mergers in indian banking industry boon or pain now if we go to the introduction part i will talk about the nationalization of banks uh, before going to that i would like to give an idea even for researchers also this area is a wonderful area for doing research either mphil or phd or even for the students also you can take it up an empirical study at the grassroots level see how the customers are facing problems with the mergers and how bankers are facing the problems with the mergers you can go to the banks discuss with the bank people talk talk to the clerk clerks clerk talk to the officers talk to the branch managers talk to the customers you will have a wonderful ideas i request the students in your area there are many bank branches go to the banks discuss at length go go to the uh, customers with simple questions definitely you will also provide good inputs good insights 
for the government also because government need some empirical evidence at grassroots level you are the uh, you are the researchers you can enter in research field also conduct a study and submit the report that is a wonderful idea before that you should know the complete picture of the mergers once you get knowledge then only you may be able to conduct the study very very effectively your inputs will go a long way for taking better decisions by the government by the policy makers so that the society will be benefited the customers will be benefited finally the students will also be benefited so therefore please understand the subject first then you go into it you indulge with research activities get good name to the institution if you are good at research the institution will also get good ranking in terms of nirf in terms of nac accreditation in terms of what not now i will brief you about uh, the nationalization of banks as i told you that earlier before nationalization the banks are only with the hands of the rich people they they are not at all focusing on farmers on rural areas they focused on only urban areas and they provided funds to the rich people they almost forgotten about the poor they almost forgotten about the social responsibility yes everybody should have social responsibility not only banks being an individual you have social responsibility towards the community community development what you what you may call it as community development. now <clears throat> as you are all aware that the nationalization of banks took place in two phases in 19 1969 na 19th july 14 banks were nationalized i think uh, during the period uh, srimati indira gandhi was the prime minister she took a dare step in nationalizing nationalization of 14 banks and later in second phase in 1980 six banks were nationalized so after nationalization of banks there is a lot of change there is a lot of change banks are scattered in rural areas banks are started in providing loans to the poor people farmers and small loans are provided to the customers so the entire banking is converted into class bank sorry into class banking to mass bank what we may call it as mass bank and undoubtedly the banking scenario is completely changed because of automation after nationalization of banks gradually banks are computerized you know because you don't know about the uh, system which the banks are adopted before computerization what they do suppose if you present a check to the bank for withdrawal of amount what they do they maintain ledger books in that they check it up your name in alphabetically and uh, they will go to your particular page turning turning the pages 
it takes a lot of time. After identifying your page, then they will check it up the all the transactions and uh, uh, when uh, um, uh, if there is a balance, then your check will be passed after verifying your signature. That should also be checked in separate Almara, which is kept the signature cards. In alphabetically, the officer is supposed to verify the signatures. Finally, your card will be checked, your signature will be checked, then it will be passed for payment of cash. See the scenario, because the students, they don't know the old system. But now, after automation, the entire scenario is changed. Just the officer or the clerk will type your number, account number, automatically. A display will come, including your uh, transactions, including your photo, including your signature. Everything will be appeared on screen. Automatically, the officer will take a decision to pass your check. That is the present scenario. So because, because of automation, because of automation, there is a lot of change. Speedy services. You know, after the automation, there is the introduction of many, many schemes like internet banking, mobile banking, debit cards, credit cards, ATMs. Now you need not depend, depend upon your bank ATM. You can make transactions with any bank ATM. That is a wonderful, that is a welcome sign. The customer is enjoying the privileges. The customer is availing the services excellently and undoubtedly it is very, very, uh, uh, very, very useful and very, very convenient to the customers for better banking facilities. There is a CRM, Customer Relationship Management. So undoubtedly these services are increased and Customers are availing the services very, very effectively. So automation is undoubtedly helpful to the banking industry and also helpful to the customers, both sides. Now, I'll talk about uh, the mergers. Before going to mergers, you are all aware in 1991, LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization was introduced. So there was economic reforms. Economic, you in view of economic reforms, Narissa Mong Committee has been appointed especially on banking sector reforms. He recommended many, many suggestions and many suggestions are accepted by the government for implementation. Mergers and acquisitions is also one of the suggestions given by Narasimha Committee in 1991. Now, let me brief about what is merger. Merger means oh. amalgamation, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute, just a minute.
Uh, is it visible, please? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, <laughs> I will brief you about what is Medjet and uh, acquisitions. The combination of two or more than two companies voluntarily is called a Medjet. There is a uh, synergy that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. How? Because two banks are merged with the other two banks is equal to a new one will be number one. And that's why we are adding one more that is equal to 5. What is acquisition? When one company takes over another company is called acquisition. So why why there is a need of mergers and acquisitions? So basically, what I call NPA plus low performance is equal to merger because many banks are suffering with non-performing assets because their loans are outstanding and even interest also may not, they may not be able to recover and principal amount is also may not be recovered from the uh, borrowers. So once it, once it is increased, naturally the bank may not be able to function very effectively. So it leads to low performance. So NPA plus low performance is equal to merger, which leads to merging of other banks. Okay. Now I will brief you about What is the need of a merger? Why banks are merging with other banks? What are the reasons? What is the need? Why government of India took decision for making mergers? That I will explain you. I think uh, uh, the uh, slide is visible. Need of a merger. Is it visible? Is it visible? Visible, sir. Yeah. Yes. Now, I will, first of all, you should know why the banks are in need of the mergers. Once you know the reasons, then we will go for boon or, boon or bane or uh, before that, uh, we will go for the discussion on history of mergers. See, Number of public sector banks are high. In, in India, and, uh, as of uh, 1969, I already told you that 14 banks were nationalized and 1980, six banks were nationalized. So, totally 20 nationalized banks in, in 19, as of 1990, sorry, as of 1980. And there is a State Bank of India and its subsidiaries. So totally, uh, they, there are around 26 public sector banks, which are very high, uh, uh, which are very high, which uh, and it needs uh, it needs merger. That means why there is a large number of public sector banks. What is the need? If if, if few members, few public sector banks are there, it is enough. And in addition to that, there is a more burden for regulatory, for regulatory system. If you take this, see, the, all the banks are regulated by the Reserve Bank of India. So Reserve Bank of India is having more burden, right? When, when there are more public sector banks are there, definitely uh, there is a more burden to Reserve Bank of India. So therefore, the government has decided to reduce the number. As I told you, the number of public sector banks are high. With regard to NPA, I, I already told you many banks have more outstandings of loans. You know, some big borrowers, industrialists, they take loans of crores of rupees. 
if they won't pay, repay it will it will be a big problem it leads to npa so therefore where there are more npas naturally it leads to low performance so when there when when it is happened with low performance it is a big problem to run the bank so therefore there is a need of measures next increase in profits some banks may increase more profits but some banks may decrease profits so what happened when the profits are increasing in some banks definitely there is a need of the banks which are having less profits it should be merged with high profit oriented banks so that the bank will function very effectively the bank will provide good schemes bank will uh, may provide a lot of customer services to the customers next diversification yes there is a need of diversification not only uh, doing the banking business but also other uh, other services should also be provided like insurance uh, like uh, many other uh, diversification activities may be provided by the banks so in that connection the bank should be sound the bank should be more profit it should have more profits then only they may go for diversifying activities and uh, say for example the banks may act as a merchant bank right like that uh, many diversifying activities may be taken up only through a strong potentiality with regard to profits with regard to npa uh, with regard to uh, any issue with regard to performance next efficiency of performance that i just now told you that performance is also key criteria uh, for uh, the for uh, for uh, for the uh, sound banking system if there is a good performance definitely the bank may be able to provide good inputs uh, they may be able to provide good system to the customers to the clients and definitely uh, that the performance will go a long way for providing good facilities to the customers so how the banks may provide good services to the customers only if the bank is in sound sound in means uh, sound means in terms of profits in terms of low npa then only the banks may come forward come forward to provide facilities next uh, reduces the risk no doubt if the banks are mergers one bank is merged with another bank definitely uh, the bank will reduce the risk that means then they it it it, it may get incurs any loss a loss will be recovered uh, after merging with uh, profit oriented banks and reduces the competition in the market also yes as you are no as you are aware there is a tough competition in the market if you can see the global scenario there is a heavy competition with the private banking industry in 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 private if you can see the scenario of private banks private banks are born in technology whereas the nationalized banks are not born they now they started uh, in adopting the technology the latest technology like uh, blockchain technology uh, uh, etc but in the case of private sector bank 
while starting uh, they adopting they adopt the new technology that's why uh, it is very difficult to compete with uh, private banks or private, or foreign banks so therefore to reduce the competition in the market there is a need of measures for sound banking system improve services definitely it improve services and i am i am sure uh, with uh, <coughs> measures or acquisitions definitely uh, the services will also be uh, provided to the customers very effectively uh, because of their strength recommendations of nersemon committee in 1991 and 90 nersemon committee was appointed in 1991 and uh, they the nersemon committee recommended that there is a need of measures so that we can reduce the npa we can increase the profits we can provide the more services therefore, therefore uh the, this is also one of the reason the government of india has taken a decision to merge the bank several banks uh wait for one minute sorry for the interruption now <clears throat> i will talk about uh, so these are all the reasons why the government of india has taken a decision for merging of banks now i will discuss about i will talk about uh, the history of mergers in indian banking industry <clears throat> as i told you that uh, the economic reforms were taken place in 1991 and narsimhong committee also made recommendations in 1991 un voice on nikla yaar va on the actually participants please uh, mute your and uh, 1991 some narsimo committee recommendations on banking sector reforms because of the reasons which we discussed at length the first bank was merged with the punjab national bank which was nationalized in the year 1969 it happened in the year 19 93 so as of 1993 there are only 19 commercial banks nationalized commercial banks and one state bank of india along with subsidiary banks okay next 
Bank of Karad Limited was merged with the Bank of India in 1994. Bank of India is also uh, nationalized in 1969. In the case of State Bank of India, Kasinath State Bank was merged with the SBI in 1995. Later, Punjab Cooperative Limited was merged with the Oriental Bank of Commerce that is called OBC. And uh, Barido Bank Limited is also merged with the Oriental Bank of Commerce in 1997. Sikkim Bank Limited was merged with the uh, Union Bank of India in 1999. Bareilly Cooperative Bank Limited was also merged with the Panya Bank of Baroda in 1999. Times Bank is also a private bank, merged with a private bank, that is HDFC Bank in 2000. Bank of Madura was merged with ICICI Bank in uh, 2001. Banaras State Limited Bank was merged with the Bank of Baroda in 2002. ICICI Limited is merged with ICICI Bank in 2002. Nedungadi Bank was taken over by Punjab National Bank in 2003. As you are all aware, Global Trust Bank was faced many issues, many problems. So therefore, Global Trust Bank was also merged with the Oriental Bank of Commerce in 2004. Later, in the year, in the same year, 2004, South Gujarat Local Area Bank was merged with the Bank of Baroda. In 2005, Centurion Bank was merged with the Bank of Punjab. And IDBI Bank is also a private bank. Uh, United Western Bank merged with IDBI Bank in 2006. Sangli Bank was taken over by ICICI Bank in 2006. Lord Krishna Bank, of course, Centurion Bank of Punjab is also a private bank merged in 2007. United Western Bank was merged with the Industrial Development Bank of India, IDBI, in 2006. Ganesh Bank of Puranwad is taken over by Federal Bank. Of course, both are uh, private banks. And uh, Bharat Overseas Bank was taken over by Indian Overseas Bank in the year 2007. Indian Overseas Bank is uh, a nationalized bank, which was nationalized in the year 1969. It was uh, uh, the year in 2007, Centurion Bank of Punjab, it was merged with the uh, HDFC Bank in 2010. Of course, both are private banks. Uh, ING Vaisya Bank is also a private bank, merged with Kotak Mahindra Bank in 2014. Next, uh, in 2007, there were uh, more banks merged with uh, public sector banks. And 2019 also, many banks were merged with uh, nationalized banks. If you can see in 2017, Bharatiya Mahila Bank is also a private bank merged with the State Bank of India. But uh, State Bank of Bekanur and Jaipur is a subsidiary bank of State Bank of India. 
స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ మైసూర్ స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ పాటియాల స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ రేవంత్ సో ఫైవ్ సబ్సిడరీస్ ఆర్ మెర్జిడ్ విత్ స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా అండ్ స్టేట్ బ్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఈజ్ అ నంబర్ వన్ బ్యాంక్ అమాంగ్ పబ్లిక్ సెక్టర్ బ్యాంక్స్ ఇన్ ద కంట్రీ విచ్ వాస్ మెర్జిడ్ ఇన్ ది ఇయర్ టూ థౌజండ్ సెవెంటీన్ ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ సీ ది సినారీ ఆఫ్ నేషనలైజ్ బ్యాంక్స్ విచ్ వర్ మెర్జిడ్ ఇన్ టూ థౌజండ్ నైన్టీన్ అండ్ ది మెర్జింగ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ టేక్ అండ్ ప్లేస్ డ్యూరింగ్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ during covid 19 many measures took place and many changes took place and uh, almost uh, sometimes we might be confused how many banks are merged with nationalized banks if we can say allahabad bank is merged with the indian bank there are two banks located in hyderabad and bengaluru andhra bank and corporation bank these two banks were, were merged with the union bank of india in 2019 syndicate bank is merged with canara bank oriental bank of commerce and united bank of india merged with punjab national bank in 2019 why vijaya bank and dena bank is also merged with the bank of baroda so in 2019 how many banks were merged alahabad bank andhra bank corporation bank syndicate bank oriental bank of commerce united bank of india vijaya bank dena bank so totally there are eight banks eight banks were merged with five banks indian bank ubi canara bank pnb bank of baroda and uh, five banks which are subsidiary banks merged with the state bank of india so this is the merger history now i will talk about the rank wise public sector banks after mergers and acquisitions and what is the tag line now i will brief you uh, the ranking what is the rank of a public sector bank right now given by reserve bank of india and uh, where the headquarter is located what is the tag line given to the bank uh punjab national bank is number 2 which is located in uh, at new delhi headquarters is located in new delhi the tagline is the name you can bank up on indian bank you are all aware it is uh, rank 7 headquarter is located in chennai your tech friendly bank state bank of india is number 1 rank which the headquarter is located in mumbai already five five banks were merged subsidiary banks merged with the state bank of india now it is number 1 among the public sector banks with a tagline with you all the way pure banking nothing else the nation's bank on us canara bank is number 4 which the headquarter is located at bengaluru tagline is together we can union bank of india already merged with uh, uh, andhra bank and uh, corporation bank which is the headquarter located at uh, mumbai good people to bank with indian overseas bank 
the rank is 9. Headquarters is located in Chennai with the tagline of good people to grow with. Next, uh, Yuko Bank, number 10, 10th rank. Headquarter located at Kolkata. Honors your trust is a tagline. Next, Bank of Maharashtra. Uh, it is uh, rank number 11. Headquarters located at Pune. One family, one bank. Punjab and Sindh Bank, headquarters located at uh, New Delhi, which is rank number 12, where services is a way of life. Bank of India, headquarters is located at Mumbai, a relationship beyond banking. Central Bank of India, headquarters is located at Mumbai, and the tagline is central to you since 1911 build a better life around us. Bank of Baroda, which is a third rank, located in Gujarat, India's international bank. So these are all the ranks of uh, the public sector banks already merged. Now, right now, only 12 public sector banks are there. Among 12, 11 banks are nationalized banks and one bank is State Bank of India, which is enacted as per the Parliament Act. So five banks were merged with the State Bank of India. And uh, uh, if you can see uh, uh, remaining uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight banks were merged with uh, five banks, right? So if you can see the scenario of all the banks, Punjab National Bank, Headquarter is located in New Delhi. So in New Delhi, how many banks are there? Punjab National Bank and Punjab and Sindh Bank. Two banks are located in New Delhi. Headquarters are located in New Delhi. In Mumbai, Bank of India headquarter, Central Bank of India headquarter Mumbai, right? And uh, Bank of Maharashtra headquarter is Pona, of course. These three are, and uh, of course, State Bank of India, Union Bank of India. One, two, three, four, five banks are located in Maharashtra headquarter. Unfortunately, in Kerala, there is no bank headquarter. Headquarter, headquarter is not located. In Tamil Nadu, there are two banks headquarters are located indian bank and indian overseas bank unfortunately in telangana and andhra pradesh there is no bank headquarter and of course the remaining states they don't have any bank headquarters but what i can say that it is a regional imbalance there is a need of one bank headquarter in a very state. Definitely, it helps. So, what I am to say that after merging with other banks, there are only 12 banks, public sector banks. 11 banks are nationalized and one bank in state bank, right? So it is really, uh, uh, the, in the case of uh, the banks uh, located in specific areas, what we may call it as concentration of power. And uh, no doubt uh, there is a need to establish uh, some banks uh, which are headquartered in different states. Okay, now I will talk about merits of mergers of banks. Now, the title is 
measures of banks moon or bane now merits means i am talking about moon how the major measures of banks are moon that all these points will explain first one better corporate governance yes we can see when there are measures the uh, the governance will become very easier the headquarter is located in a particular place of one or two banks who which are merged with one bank so so we can simply say that uh, it is a convenient uh, corporate governance it is a convenient administration and it is also convenient to regulate by the reserve bank next increase in the network branches no doubt the branches the branch network may also be increased with the merging of banks because each bank branches may be located or scattered all over the country and it leads the network will also be improved increase in customer base definitely the customers of different banks which are merged with a single bank a, a bank it leads more increase of customer base customers will also be increased and it reduces the npa because i already told you that npa plus low performance is equal to merger so therefore where there are more nps in a bank definitely it leads when it is merges merger took place definitely the reduction of nps is possible compliance with the statutory requirement yes it is possible the the statutory requirements may be fulfilled when there are merges took place fulfilling more responsibility towards society yes because when there are less number of banks which are working and having more number of branches they fulfill the their social responsibility they may come forward to implement many programs especially they implement poverty alleviation programs as you are all aware without banks government may not be able to implement any poverty alleviation programs government of india is formulating and implementing many many programs for the alleviation of poverty so all these programs are implemented only with the help of the banks so bank assistance is required for the successful implementation of any scheme improved financial position definitely the financial position will also be improved when banks merges take place because a loss or low profit banks were merged with high profit high volume profit banks definitely they they improve the financial position they improve the profits also larger bank is capable of facing global competition yes now state bank of india is a leading bank which is catered to the needs at global level also even it is facing uh, 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 
a competition in the global markets. They are launching many products on par with the private banks, on par with the foreign banks, that is possible. Reduce the cost of banking operations. Yes, definitely, when uh, there are more number of branches, we can reduce the cost, the expenditure of banking operations. Increase the geographical area of the banks. Yes, some banks are located in some parts of the country and some banks are located in some parts of the country. So if two banks are merged, definitely they will cater to the needs of the total population of the country. So definitely it helps in geographic areas of banks. But I told you that there is a possibility of regional imbalance because the headquarters of banks are located in only few states. What about other states? In terms of headquarters, it is imbalance. In terms of branches, definitely there is no balance. Uh, sorry, there is uh, undoubtedly coverage of geography. Uniform basis. See, bank to bank, the salary structure may be different. Now, after the merging, the government may implement uniform wages, uniform salary structure. It is possible. Size of bank. Though, so, after the merge, definitely the size of bank will be solved and uh, it, it helps in providing good facilities to the customers. More financial resources. Yes, when the banks are merged, they will get more financial resources. They may be able to provide more credit to the customers by implementing many schemes, many programs because different banks may have different schemes. When it was merged, all these schemes are implemented and the customers will be benefited with other banks' schemes. That is a, a, a wonderful idea of mergers. That is the reason. Which are useful to the um, banking industry and definitely they will improve more financial resources. Now, I will talk about merit and, <coughs> sorry, uh, still merits are there. Some more merits are there, uh, I will discuss. More delegated power, yes. See, all the decisions are taken place at the central level. Now, in view of majors, the powers will be delegated to the officers, to the middle level, to officers, higher levels to middle level like that. It is possible through the majors of banks. Less operational and transactional cost, greater risk taking ability, yes. No doubt, the risk taking ability will be improved when the measures of banks. They may be able to reduce their transaction costs. It is a welcome sign. Larger staff strength. Universe of measures, the staff may be combined and uh, the, the, the staff may have a specific uh, a, a variety of skills. The skills will be, be definitely make use of the banks and uh, their specialization. And what we call it, uh, the experts 
the synergy of experts may be the services of the experts may be utilized properly increase in geographical and regional spread that we had already discussed geographically the branch network will be improved but uh, as i told you that with regard to headquarters there is a there, there is a, a regional imbalance better market image yes the image of the market in banking industry it will definitely improve because the banks will uh, the banks were become strong after merging say once they unite definitely they will have strong will power they 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 may cater the needs of the totality of the customers increased bargaining power and better competitive position definitely the bargaining power will also be increased and uh, they may be able to compete with private banks very easily it is need to foray into overseas market yes when banks are strong definitely they may enter into the overseas market they will establish the bank branches all over the world it is easier than it is uh the merged with the banks because it may become sound and uh, very easier to enter into the overseas market larger variety of products under single umbrella yes many products are introduced are provided by the banks for a particular bank some products are uh, already in, under implementation and other banks which are merged with also they have some products so if at all it is merged many many large number of products are available with a single branch with a single bank large bank is capable of facing global competition yes yes if it is a larger bank which was merged earlier definitely it may be able to easily face with the global competition minimizing of overall risk minimization of overall risk see when there is a risk what we may call it as a risk management when there is a risk that can be reduced when it is united it is common even in if you take the family structure undivided family divided family there is a lot of difference the divided family they are supposed to face many risks many threats but undivided if it is undivided definitely they may be able to face very very effectively and finally the mergers of banks may get a lot of opportunities and they may be able to provide more and more facilities to the customers now i will talk about the demerits of mergers of banks what i call it as bane talking about bane so far we discussed about boon now i talk about bane weaknesses of the small banks are transferred to the bigger bank of course as i told you the low performance banks the low profit banks are merged with bigger banks so definitely all the weaknesses will be transferred to the bigger bank which is a big problem the bigger bank will be in stress definitely it is undoubtedly the bigger banks sometimes they may be in doldrums even though it is having more profits it is having strong network 
net worth but the big banks will will be a big problem while managing competition in the market will reduce yes where there is a competition a single bank may be able to compete with private banks or foreign banks that also be a big problem merger will result in, in shifting closer of many atms branches and controlling the offices it is also a pathetic issue because because of merger some branches will be closed in future say for example in my village uh there is a bank andhra bank was located and which is located in bus stand and the union bank is located in outside outskirts of the village now both banks are merged so automatically one branch will be closed in future that leads the customers will face a problem the vicinity of the bank branch will be changed the head offices of the banks after the merger will be situated at a far off place yes you take the keys of case of andhra bank once it was merged with union bank the headquarter is located in mumbai so the headquarter will be far off but however the zonal offices or regional offices are opened in hyderabad but the headquarter is located in mumbai that's a headache compared to offer voluntary retirement schemes so many staff when there is a parity between the banks definitely many 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 officers are compelled to go for brs branch network issues i already told you that many issues are there many issues are indulging because of merger destroy the idea of decentralization so all the decisions are taken at uh, headquarter uh, because the bank head offices are closed which are merged with other banks and uh, their head offices may be converted into zonal offices or regional offices culture of different bank work culture may be different of merging banks that also a big problem risk of fraud and robberies it is also possible when there are merges governance issues are also there it is also a a a a big problem which uh, the banks are facing losing future job opportunities yes no doubt since the banks are merged with other banks automatically some of the branches are closed and there is no need of staff so it is a loss to the future graduates because gradually the recruitment will, will the recruitment will not take place only limited number cross selling as you are aware that after the merging the banks are given targets for cross selling say for example if bank provides loans they need to collect insurance also right the, the the banks are given targets to collect insurance also to some other insurance companies which are subsidies to the banks also so like that mutual funds some targets are given to the banks for investing in mutual funds such a cross selling activity will take on place that will also affect the banks 
there is no benefits when we are cross-selling to the bank. The benefits may get not by the bank, but by the top people only. Inconvenience to the customers. As you are aware, during the pandemic situation, when the major activity took place, there is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of inconvenience to the customers in availing the in availing the opportunities, in availing the services with regard to issue of checkbooks, with regard to issue of passbooks, with regard to issue of password, many, many problems which are faced by the customers during the uh, last one year in view of the measures. The service of the customers also Once the customer is indulged with a specific bank, once it is merged, definitely the, the customer may, may feel somewhat <coughs> discomfort. So these are all the, some of the demerits of measures of banks. Now, <coughs> I will brief you about some issues and challenges. High competitive pressure. Yes. I already told you that there is a high competitive pressure with foreign banks, with private banks. Already private banks have good network, good automation, good technology they are adapting. That is a that is a big issue, a big challenge with regard to competitive pressure. With regard to greater capital market openness, it is an important features of the Indian financial reform process has been the calibrate with the current account convertible. So it has to be seen that the volatility of capital inflows does not result in unacceptable disruption in exchange rate determination which inevitable uh, real sector consequences. So it is a it is also a big issue with regard to foreign banks. India is experiencing a great pressure of what we may call it call it as a, a greater presence of foreign banks over time. So as a result, number of issues will raise, like how will smaller national banks compete in India with them, with the foreign banks? And will they themselves need to generate a larger international presence is a big problem. Secondly, overlaps and uh, potential conflicts between home country regulators of foreign banks and host country regulators. That is the second issue. How will this be addressed and resolved in the years to, to come? It's a, it's a pending issue since uh, decades. So it has been recent years that even relatively strong like, regulatory action taken by regulators against uh, such global banks has negligible market or reputational impact on them in terms of their stock prices or similar, uh, similar metrics. Technology is the key. The next uh, issue, you know, the information technology is a central to banking. Foreign banks and the new private banks 
have embraced technology right from their inception and continue to do so even now although public sector banks have crossed the 70% level of computerization but the direction is to achieve 100% so networking in banks has also been receiving focus and attention in recent times you know most recently the trend observed in the banking industry is the sharing of atms by banks it is a welcome sign this is one area where perhaps india needs to do significant catching up it is a wise for indian banks to exploit this globally state of art of expertise and domestically available to their fullest advantage with regard to consolidation now we are slowly but surely moving from a regime of large number of small banks banks to small number of larger banks so the era the new era is uh, one of the consolidation around uh identified core competencies so if they like uh, measures and equations so the successful measure of hdfc bank and times bank stamchart bank and uh, ang bindles bank centurion bank and bank of punjab have demonstrated this trend okay now next uh, risk management it is also a, a, a challenging issue uh, a, the banking in uh, modern economy is in all about uh, risk management see the successful negotiation and implementation of uh, you know the basel to a card is likely to lead to an even sharper focus on the risk measurement and risk management at the institutional level so now important pillar for staying ahead of the competition with regard to reach and innovation in the highest sustained growth is contributing to enhancing demand for financial savings and uh, opportunities of course it also industrial expansion has accelerated and merchandise trade growth is high and uh, there are vast demands for infrastructure investment from public sector private sector and uh, through pr- public private partnership so thus what we can say that the banking system has to extend itself and innovate banks will have to innovate and look for new delivery mechanism and provide better access to the currently underserved so this is uh, one issue and uh, managing human resources like uh, vrs promotions cultural issues these three issues are uh, uh, a challenging issues because uh, the uh, the months uh, the major take place many staff members are going for vrs and uh, there is a problem for maintaining the seniority promotions with regard to work culture is also uh, one of the uh, issues with regard to managing rural branches <coughs> so banks may shift merge or close all branches except rural branches and uh, uh, sole semi urban branches at their discretion so it is uh, quite interesting to note that uh, the shifting merger or closer of any rural branch as well as sole semi urban branch would require appro- approval of the reserve bank so further 
shifting or merging banks may ensure that the banking needs of the center continue to be met through the either uh, satellite office or uh, mobile vans or through business correspondence thus the center should not be left unbanked that is a that is also a big issue with regard to governance sorry with regard to reduce the time for setting of new branches so reserve bank of india is stipulated that the new branches when they, when they open they are not supposed to take more time it should be as per the it can be stipulated time it should be opened in rural areas and uh, it also affects the shareholders definitely small bank that is the uh, the price is quoted in, uh, in the stock market and some shareholders who are the already the majors are suffered financial inclusion is also a challenging issue to the banking industry because under financial inclusion they need to cover uh, the uh, literacy of unbanked business maintain relationship with clients the clients are different from one bank to another one the one city is much so they need, they need to maintain relationship with clients planning integration yes integration is required it is also a challenging issue change management strategies yes sometimes when they whenever the changes occurs some staff members they, are, they may not show any interest that is also uh, uh, a challenging issue which the banks are supposed to focus so these are all the challenges uh, and uh, issues so as a whole to sum up uh, uh, the uh, to sum up or to conclude about uh, uh, the banking majors uh, in india no doubt no doubt at present it is a bane but however in future it is a boon in future we can expect good number of uh, excellent facilities and uh, the banks will render the services the customers at those step and uh, we can expect more and more facilities rather than the before the majors so yes you are all aware when the the uh, one city is united definitely the bank will be strong and we can expect that. uh we are all always uh, pessimistic and uh, uh, we can expect that, that the banking industry will cater to the needs of the poorest among the poor at grassroots level and sure this topic will undoubtedly helpful for the students to know i already told that you can indulge with research activities on this area conduct empirical studies get some new ideas and i am sure it will be useful now i uh, that's all about uh, uh, my presentation now open for discussion for few minutes over to the armesas thank you very much for giving me the opportunity thank you sir and this is for the participation thank participants you. out there thank you sir Yeah, ma'am. This is for the participants out there. If you have any queries, the forum is open for the discussion of the questions. You can either unmute yourself and raise the question. or else you can post it out in the chat box thank you
I hope uh, uh, you enjoyed my session. I hope uh, you might be benefited uh, uh, with my content. Uh, now I want your opinion. Uh, the participants are requested to say something about uh, uh, the uh, the presentation about the topic, or you can come forward to raise any issues. Participants, do you have any doubt? Do you need any clarification? I think uh, there will be no doubts. Yes, sir. Huh? Nobody. Anybody is having doubts, participants. Sir, in what way the mergers will be helpful for customers, sir? Pardon? In what way the customers will be benefited through this mergers? Yeah, yeah. See, different uh, banks were already introduced many products. Now, these banks, once it is merged, the customers will have an opportunity to avail many products already launched by the bank and already merged with the, the other bank. So many products are introduced uh, and the customer will be uh, somewhat uh, benefited and the, no doubt uh, the services offered by the major bank will be a go uh, will go a long way in future. Thank you. Thank you. So one minute we shall have one photo session, sir. We can take one screen sure. Participants can unmute your videos for a minute so that we Participants, kindly unmute your videos. So it seems no doubts. Huh? I think uh, students are enjoyed the session. Yes, sir. Students, you can give your feedback. Any feedback? Yes, sir. Good morning. Yes, given the yes, link, sir. sir. Actually, we really enjoyed the session, so it was really informative because within one and a half hours, we came to know what is the amalgamation and why mergers are important. So we learned at the same time, we enjoyed the session. So. Shall we wind up, sir? Mom?
Now I call over Miss Arti from second year to propose vote of thanks. Okay. It is joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. A very good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of Auxilium family, first of all, my sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event a grand success. On behalf of management, faculties, and students, it is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this delightful session. First and foremost, I thank our resource person, Dr. Pacha Malayadri. As we know, Dr. Pacha Malayadri is a renowned scholar and a resource person. Today, we have got the opportunity to hear her thoughts, and this will definitely enlighten, enlighten our minds. So, your thoughts have enriched our minds and shown us a new path. It was really means a lot to us. Thanks a lot for giving your precious time in your busy schedule. On behalf of a college, I extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Pacha Malayadri, who spent his busiest time raising the occasion. I would like to convey my gratitude as secretary, Sister Alice Katie, for encouragement and guidance. Further, I would like to express my profound gratitude to our principal, Sister Jayashanti R, for conditional support. I also take this opportunity to thank our vice principal, Sister Sumati S. Shift 1, and Dr. Sister Amla Baladmadi Shift 2 for their continued guidance. Today, the webinar on mergers in Indian banking industry is booth or ban. We came to know about the nationalizations of banks and why the mergers of banks takes place. And it is important to know whether the mergers of banks in Indian industry is a boon or ban. You made us clear that the mergers of banks in today's uh, banking industries is always a boon to the Indian system. On behalf of uh, Huxillium College, my sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event a grand success. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. R. Gayatri Ma'am, head of the Department of BCom Banking and Insurance, for arranging and faculty members for organizing such an informative session for us. I thank faculties from neighboring college. Last but not the least, I would like to thank students for their active participation as a grand success. Once again, I thank everyone. Thank you so. Thank you. There is always a difference between the right ending and the happy ending. Now, we shall end our today's session with our college anthem. Auxilium round you shining, all the bright joys of you. Eternal Lord. Behold the torch that is to die, or you send us. On the bed, God bless, God bless our Savior. God bless, this young year God of love to our motto true. Yes. 
accept your vote of no to our motto true will never fail to thee. I hope all the participants have filled the feedback form. The e-certificate will be distributed after one week. Thank you for all your cooperation. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank the you, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Dr. Gayatri. Thank you, sir. Good day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, can you see the feedback link? Only then you will be receiving your certificate. Thank you, Gayatri, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.